sister will be watching this uh, later on, uh, uh, the recording, and to all of the whole family circle, we extend our sympathies from myself and from the parish of Kelly Mark and from the wider community. This uh, service will proceed according to the, the order of service that you have. I'm thankful to Dean for leading us in the music today. The committal will take place after the church service, and that is happening in Edrin Beebe Cemetery, in the new part at the front of Edrin Beebe Cemetery, down the Mount Charles Road. And uh, you're welcome to come and join us there as well. Afterwards, those who are able, are invited to join with the family for refreshments in the Abbey Hotel and that will be held of course in accordance with all the COVID-19 uh, regulations in place at the moment. And with that in mind, uh, as much as possible can uh, I encourage you to follow um, the social distancing and to keep our face masks on while we're in church and while we're at the grave side as well as far as is possible uh, to do so. The uh, service is, of course, here in order that we would remember before God our dear brother Victor, that we would give thanks for his life, that we can leave him in the keeping of God, his creator, redeemer, and judge, to commit his body to be buried, and to comfort one another in our grief, in the hope that is ours through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we pray that here today we may know Christ's peace in communion with all of God's faithful servants. God of all consolation, whose Son, Jesus Christ, was moved to tears at the grave of Lazarus, his friend, look with compassion on your children in their loss. Give to troubled hearts the light of hope and strengthen in us the gift of faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand as we listen to our first hymn, Amazing Grace, as we present.
merciful Father, we thank you for the comfort and truth of your holy word. Grant that as we hear from your scriptures, that you would renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead, and strengthen our faith that all who have died in Christ will share in his resurrection, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Linda, Joseph and Maggie are going to read for us now from the Bible readings for ourselves. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the heavens. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you going out and you're coming in from this time forevermore. Well, I'm here, I'd just like to thank you all for coming today. Dad would have loved this send off. Psalm 121 is very poignant to us as it was read to Dad in his last hour of life. When I think of Psalm 121, I see a memory of Dad at his happiest times in the hills of Norway. The last journey Dad made in this church was walking me up the aisle in September 2019, which was a very special moment, and it's a moment that I will treasure forever. And my dear Daddy, Rest in peace. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, it gave us great testament to God, because shepherds, and looking after his flock throughout his whole life. And I always thought that his flock was just the cows, the sheep, the farm animals. But I learned over the years his flock were the people as well because of care and thought and devotion. He did it across, it transcended across the whole timeland, the whole time he gone and the whole of Ireland and beyond. Dad, he didn't like goodbyes. He really didn't. He did anything to get away from him. So anyone who visited him, he would make excuses. I've got to feed the cows. I've got to do this job, that job, whatever it was. He wanted to get away from him. He was a very emotional. So, instead of goodbye, I shall say farewell for now. So we all get to a farewell for now. And 
2 His dad, Tom His mom, Louisa His brothers, Norman and Richard Who you meet for the first time Or they, the crumb and beyond will never forget so go now, get that bag together, and find Ashley Murphy. You'll have a great old session. Thank you. John 14, verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. I just want to say, um, if I can be a 12th of the community woman, as he was a community man, the community will be lucky to have me, so I will do everything I can to follow on in his memory, and rest in peace, Dad. Those very fine readings and wonderful tributes from the three that Victor would have been very pleased with and very proud of. In one sense, there's not very much that we can add because things have been those have been said so so well. But we have come to remember Victor's life and to give thanks for his life. And I'm quite sure that. Uh, with him being such a well-known man and so well-regarded that if any one of you were standing here today instead of me, you would have many stories and memories to add if it was you in this position. These are just a few highlights. Victor was born in July, 6th of July, 1945, Donegal Town. Thomas and Louisa, his parents, his siblings, Margaret, as we mentioned, who lives in Manchester. Dickie, who died when he was a boy, and Norman, who died in 2006. Victor's schooling was in Donegal uh, town, a Waterloo place, at the school there. He went to school aged three and a half. So, um, an impressive early starter. Later, he moved to Edrin Lee National School and the Tech in Donegal town. A decisive turning point, of course, in Victor's life was in 1970 when he met Kathleen Patterson and a dance in Donegal Town and they married on the 3rd of April 1976 in Inver Parish Church, St John's Church. They've been together 52 years and married for 45. Victor had great times at Kathleen's home house in Durham. He later farmed the land there and had a great love for Durham. The neighbours there and all the connections in that part of Donegal. He was like a brother to Kathleen's sister, Alberta, who was a teenager when he started coming to Durin. Kathleen and Victor went everywhere together. They enjoyed nights out, day trips away. They attended lots of weddings, wakes and funerals down through the years. And often when they went away for a trip or to go somewhere into a cafe for a nice cup of tea and a scone would be part of it. They were life companions and very, very close for all of that time. 
Victor worked in several jobs, as you'll know, in Coventry on building sites for the ESP, in the mobile grocery shop, plumbing. Many of the houses in Donegal, I remember, was, was plumbed by him and he came out to many emergencies. And then latterly, as a school bus driver for 20 years, driving national school children and the tech children and special needs children to St. Agnes Day Centre and to Cleveland. He loved working with all the children and those with special needs really enhanced his life and he did theirs. He knew all of those children by name. He enjoyed the connection and the daily conversations with them. But there was probably nothing that Victor loved more than being out on the farm, on his quad, singing, whistling as he went up the hills. He loved the freedom of farming the land. He loved Orbeg. That townland was everything to him. When he went on holiday to Canada, he phoned home to the neighbours most evenings to know what was going on in Orbeg. He was a great neighbour. He was a kind, hard-working person. He was very widely respected. He helped people out both in ways that were known and in ways that people don't know. He made hay, he worked in the bog, he joined in that great community spirit. Peter loved to ramble to the neighbours' houses and he spent many a Sunday evening there. He was a brilliant musician, a great accordion player, playing by ear, entertaining at birthday parties and all sorts of functions or just to entertain friends. And I think he played the uh, pipes as well at times in the past. Victor had a great head for maths and for numbers, for remembering dates and years, mental arithmetic. He couldn't be faulted on that area of work. Who has inherited it? I wonder. And who hasn't? <laughs> would be interested to know. Victor cared for his elderly mother who lived with him at Orbeg and then when his father, no, Albert, was unwell, he and Lily also came to stay in Orbeg. And uh, when Albert passed away, Lily had her own bedroom built on by Victor. He was very kind to those of the generation that loved him, and he was very proud of the generation that followed him. His three children and their educational achievements gave him great pride, even though he found it hard to understand their desire to travel. After all, what could there be in the world that there wasn't in or bay? There was no place like home. Victor was delighted when all three moved back closer to home and were able to see them more. Growing up, he taught Maggie to drive the tractor, the quad, to work in the bog, at the turf, change tires, use tools, how to do farming. He drove, he drove Joseph to university in Galway each year and made sure the house was in tip-top working order, taught him as well to drive all those vehicles and to do the farm work. Linda as well, of course, taught to drive, well looked after on the day of the driving test, great care went into it all. And he loved to go house hunting with Linda when she was at that stage to leave home. He was in his element, checking out the plumbing and the electrics of each and every house that they were up to scratch. As Linda herself uh, mentioned so movingly, he walked Linda down this very line here in Killymar Church in 2019. A beautiful moment. Joshua and Ryan were very fortunate to have such a good granddad. He enjoyed spending time with them so much and they brought a lot of joy into Victor's life these past five years. Other children as well were looked after at the home at different times and had great hospitality there. And one name to mention is Sean McGarrigal. He was like a grandchild to Victor. They spent hours working outside of farming and different tasks outdoors. In 2011, Victor had two heart attacks and after that near-death experience, he found a new appreciation for life, getting very keen on walking, which he did every day. Then two years ago, Victor had a stroke, and the family uh, would like to thank very much Sligo Hospital, Stroke Unit, Medical North Ward there, 
that are Kenny Hospital Rehabilitation Unit, Donegal Town Community Hospital, where Victor spent a year and five months. And also the doctors at the old school surgery, Drs. Carlos, Blair, and O'Doherty, the carers who looked after him at home these past four months, the community nurses who visited him daily, and the palliative care team at Sligo and Donegal. Above all, a word should be said for Kathleen, who cared for Victor so well and so thoroughly over the years and during those last four months that he had at home. During the two years since his stroke, Kathleen didn't miss a day of seeing him travelling to Sligo, Better Kenny, uh, making window visits when that was all that was possible. It has been a difficult time and I know that Victor's family want to thank everybody for the support and care that you have given for the prayers and kind words and all that has been done. As we face a future which will now be different without the presence of Victor Irwin, we need to look to God, the author of life. Those readings which the family chose for today and which they um, express something of what those readings mean. They, each of them speak of the different ways in which the living God helps us. In Psalm 121, I lift my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. That's the help of God the Creator, the Lord who made all things, who controls all things, who holds our lives in his hands. In Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That's another kind of help. That's the help of God, the companion, the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came and lived on this earth and understands our hurts and our fears and our pain. Like a shepherd leading the sheep. And then in John 14, the Lord Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. I am going to prepare a place for you, and I will take you to be where I am. That's the help of God, the Saviour, of Christ who died and rose again for us, died to pay for our sin and wrong doing, rose to bring us to eternal life, and who has gone ahead of us to take us by faith to be with him in heaven. Three ways in which God sends his help. God the creator who made us, God the companion who's with us, and God the saviour who has prepared a way that those who place their trust in him will be safe and secure forever. On this sad day, but also day of remembrance and faith, let us now stand to affirm our faith and trust in God by saying the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We remain standing for the name. Shall we gather at the river?
to remember also the, as uh, was mentioned earlier, the tragic and, and violent death of Ashley Murphy and all who are victims of violence. Almighty God, whose power can bring good out of evil, give us faith and light in times of darkness. Help us to understand your ways and to live in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for each of ourselves that, that we may live in the light of eternity. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and the grace to use or write the time that is left to us here on earth. Lead us to repent of our sins, the evil we have done, and the good we have not done. Strengthen us to follow in the steps of your Son, in the way that leads to the fullness of eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, support us all the day long, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together as our Lord himself taught us, saying, Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We stand for the hymn, The Old Rugged Cross.
servant, depart in peace, according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God our Creator and our Redeemer, by your power, Christ conquered death and entered into glory, confident of his victory and claiming his promises. We now leave your servant Victor in your gracious keeping. In the name of Jesus our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.